You are watching the Jewish Music Report video blog. Welcome to the Jewish Music Report video blog. I am Mendel the Sheikhet. Uh, today we will be looking at Mendy Werdiger's brand new album, Tamid Bechal Yoyim. <laughs> I was excited about this album um, as soon as I heard about it. Uh, this was back when I interviewed um, Rebendi Werdiger for Oide Sifchai 2. I heard rumors about such a collaboration between um, Mendy Werdiger and Team Productions. Um, and uh, during the course of that interview, um, he confirmed it. The reason I was so excited about this is because um, Team Productions was the production team that uh, first really broke into this market, into taking um, Hamisha albums, um, albums that are acceptable in most any home, um, but yet they present it in a modern context. Interestingly, it was um, Mandy Werdiger's son, Yisrael Werdiger, um, who was the first one who really broke into this market um, with Team Productions, um, and of course he was followed shortly after by um, by Shlaimi Teisig, and um, <clears throat> later on under uh, the direction of uh, Naftali Schnitzler, um, Barry Weber, um, and of course the rest is history. <laughs> Um, now, touching on Mendy Werdiger for a moment, uh, I remember growing up the Haverim albums, um, which essentially were the same sort of concept. Uh, it was taking um, Hamish music um, and uh, presenting it in a modern context. But I think back then, I mean, this was, what, well, it must have been about 20 years ago. Um, I think it was a little before its time. I don't think the market was ready for um, for that sort of chiddush at that point, um, and of course now, uh, thanks to the efforts of Team Productions, times have changed. The question, of course, is: um, after all these years, uh, does Mendy Werdiger still have what it takes? Um, and uh, I gotta tell you, um, Mendy Werdiger is sounding as good or maybe better than I've ever heard him before. Um, the sweetness and the varmkeit of his voice um, are um, as good as I've ever heard them. His vocal control is probably better than ever. I, for one, have to say, Mendy Werdiger has still definitely got it. Now, from a production end, this album definitely has all of the elements um, that make for that signature Team Productions um, sort of album uh, that is gaining in popularity, and rightfully so. Um, for starters, the first thing you hear as soon as the as soon as the uh, the first notes hit is the rhythm section. Um, in Jewish music, for some reason, the rhythm section is often it almost seems like it's ignored, um, almost as if it's a side thing, um, and instead you have uh, right away the first notes and there's the the, the wall of trumpets that um, that come blasting. Um, whereas team productions, they they focus very strongly on the rhythm section, on being able to hear the um, the resonance of every drum beat and the the, the vibrations of every of every every uh, bass slap and. Um, it's a very pared down sort of thing where where the where the song is built on the rhythm section, and the other elements are used to spice it up, to highlight certain things, bring out certain things, and what you end up with is a a much stronger drive, um, and also you end up with music that doesn't overrun the song, but rather highlights and brings out the beauty of each melody. <laughs> Shabbos 
The songs on this album are perfectly, perfectly suited to uh, Mendy's voice, Mendy's style. Um, there are compositions by um, composers you'd expect on a Teen Productions album, uh, such as Mati Illowitz, uh, Pinky Weber, um, Yossi Green, um, Dudley Kalish. And then there's also a couple of surprises, like um, Rabitzian Schenker, um, as well as Shalom Ezri. And I think the addition of these composers um, give a sort of different dimension to the album, um, which I find very appealing. <laughs> Uh, now, if I do have one complaint about this album, it would be the overuse of grunge guitars. Um, let me give you a little crash course in grunge guitars. Um, the grunge guitar is a sort of, um, it's a distorted guitar noise. Um, it's a rock guitar, but the mids are higher and the lows and the highs are pulled down. Um, now, when you have it the other way around, if you put the mids down and the lows and, and highs up, you end up with kind of a sharper sort of um, rock guitar sound. Um, now, when you have the mids up, you end up with a very fat sound. Um, and they actually use it in many places in this album. They use it very well, and it works well with the context because of, like we were talking about before, how things tend to be very pared down, um, not a whole, not too much going on. And the grunge guitar works great there. There were a couple of spots in the album, however, um, where the grunge guitars were used um, in connection with also having trumpets going on at the same time. Um, and those spots were a little bit too much. Let me give you an example. You have a small room, a tiny little booth, and you have a fat person in there. Let's say I'm in there. And then you try to bring another me in there. Now you can see it's getting a little crowded, right? This is the same thing. You have a grunge guitar. It's a fat noise. A trumpet, also a fat noise. You try to squeeze them both in a small spot, and it doesn't work well. talk bottom line here. At the end of the day, uh, this is just absolutely a fantastic album. Um, it is the type of album that you can listen to over and over and over again. It's not a gimmicky album. It's an album with the real teichen. Um, and it's just, every time you listen to it, it's just, it grows on you more and more and more. Um, and I mean, this is just a really, really worthwhile purchase. Um, so I suggest you go out and get it now. Anyways, we'll see you next time on the Jewish Music Report video blog. Andy,